Forgettable Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Werner Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. The 2025 crop is up and growing, and today we're going to take a look at how to assess those plant stands. To kick things off, we'll head to Manitoba, where Kelvin Hepner and Hensel's Calum Alexander will look at stand counts and discuss how to deal with those powerful winds that can cause trouble for the crop and headaches for the growers. Here in Mitchell, Ontario, I'm joined by Hensel Co-op field marketer Dave Luigi for a look at the crop in this province. We'll talk plant populations, plant performance, and the need for patience. But first, let's head west. Standing in a pinto bean field here in the Red River Valley in southern Manitoba, joined by Caleb Alexander. And Caleb, when we're in a, in a bean field at this time of year, what are we looking for in terms of stand establishment and, and assessing plant stand? Okay, well, you know, this is the time of year where, you know, we quite often get a lot of calls about, you know, doing a stand assessment and trying to determine whether we've got an adequate plant stand to make a crop. So when we're assessing a plant stand, the first thing we have to consider is the market class of the beans and our row spacing. So in Manitoba, um, we have a number of different uh, row spacings that beans are planted on um, in a narrow row situation. Um, you, some people call it solid seeded. You're looking at a row spacing of 10 inches, 12 inch. Um, 15s are also considered narrow. And then our larger, our, our wider row widths, like a 20 inch or a 30 inch, are pretty common as well. So each of those row spacings have a desired plant population depending on a market class. So, for example, on a navy or a black bean, on a, uh, on a 15 inch row, we're always looking for a target plant population of 135 to 140,000 plants per acre um, on, a, on, a, on a, like a 15 inch row. Um, but for a navy or a black bean on a 30 inch row, we're looking for about 95 to 100,000 for a population. Um, moving to the larger caliber beans like a Pinto or a Great Northern um, on a, you know, on a on a 20 inch spacing, we're looking for that 75 to 85,000. And then on a 30 inch row, you know, 70, 65,000 in there is often adequate for, for a Pinto on a 30 inch. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the common culprits, the, the causes, things we, we should be looking for as, as reasons why we may have a, a lower than ideal stand? Yeah, like some of the things that contribute to a uh, thinner plant stand in, in, uh, in our area here in Western Canada, things like soil conditions at time of planting, whether, you know, whether we've got cool, cold, damp soils, seed quality, planting equipment, soil crusting, um, all of those factors can thin up a stand a little bit. So um, when, we, when we have a look to assess a stand, those are kind of the culprits, but we always start with, with doing a plant count to determine what we've got out here. So for that, we just need our tape measure. Um, we typically pick a, a random spot. So in that 10 feet, we have uh, 43 plants. So I just go to my trusty app on my phone here so uh, I got 43 plants in 10 feet a row on a 30 inch row and we're looking at a population of 75,000 which for Pintos is right about ideal and you know that's the general impression when we walked up to this field you can have a look at it is uh, you know it's got an excellent stand this is off to a great start mm -hmm. typically when we look at a thinner stand and we're trying to assess it we'll measure do these counts at you know three or four random spots throughout the field, take an average and then go from there. So sometimes, you know, if we have a stand that's a little on the thin side caused by one of those factors we talked about, um, you know, then it gets a little trickier because you're trying to predict, you know, what plants are still yet to come out of the ground and what plants are, you know, potentially are going to recover from something detrimental that's happened to our stand out in the field. So I talked about cold, damp soils, like dry beans love being planted into warm, moist soils, you know, under ideal conditions. I mean, these, these have, were planted roughly two weeks ago. They're off to a great start. Last year, we had a lot of beans planted into cold, damp soils. Emergence, in some cases, took three weeks. 
So, you know, it was kind of dicey there for a while whether some of these fields were going to make it. So, you know, those are things that you have to look at. A lot of these factors that we've talked about here, Caleb, have to do with emergence. Some of these things that can be detrimental to our plant population maybe happen after emergence, say wind, say hail, those types yeah. of things are also part of this part of this equation. Yeah, so if we've had a wind event and uh, we've had some damage sustained to our uh, our edible bean plant population out in the field, we've got to have a look at the growing point of the plant. So even if a plant, you know, this one, you know, if it's been tattered up really bad by wind, you know, it can be very defoliated. Um, but we've got to have a look at our growing point. Um, and if that growing point, you know, a wind damage, once the damage occurs and the plants all get thrashed, you, it's best to wait a couple days to assess um, the recovery potential. And you've got to have a look at that growing point. If that growing point in the plant is still green and healthy, and you see new growth in that growing point, even after the damage, there's a pretty good chance that that plant will recover and produce a, a viable plant that can still, you know, provide adequate yield potential in your field. Now, Dave, planting here in Ontario, a little different than Manitoba. Um, you like to see the beans twice in a week if you can. Tell yep. us about that. Ideally, I'd yeah, like to plant the first week in, uh, in June. And so you like to see them the first time when you're putting them in the planter uh, box and the second time when they're coming up uh, in, in that seven day period. So. Fortunately, this year we didn't quite get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, but these beans are looking pretty good. Yeah, Tell they us about are. this story. They are. Yeah, so these beans were planted, uh, uh, it'd be two weeks tomorrow that they've been in the ground here. And they took probably 10 to, well, 10 days to come up. And there's still the odd one popping up here yet right now. But um, we had a, a one inch rain shortly after they were planted. And then the weather turned cool on us. And so they, we've had a little bit of slower emergence than, than what's considered ideal. Dave, let's talk populations here. Now, Calum talked some population numbers from Manitoba. A yep. little different here, but we have the same goal. Yeah, that's right. We, we try to get the right population to optimize uh, yields. So um, here, for large seeded beans in a 30-inch row, which is they're predominantly growing in, we like to see a population of, probably a planted population of somewhere between 70 and 75,000. Um, small seeded beans, in a 30 inch row, we're probably upping that population to somewhere between 85 to 95, somewhere in there. And in a narrow row, mostly 15s, we're probably upwards of that 100, and, 100 to 110,000. Mm. So I want to talk about good stands in a second, but hey, what happens if, we, uh, if, if, if we're off the rails here? You know, we're, we're looking at replant. Surprisingly, um, you can have a 50%, pretty much a 50% uh, reduction in stand and you're still going to probably look at it 85 to 90 uh, percent of your expected yield given you know that we get good weather conditions um, the other thing when we're assessing that is that they got to be evenly spaced then yet too so if there's large gaps um, that's that's not going to work mm -hmm. so what about patience here? We need to be patient because you, you mentioned hey, yep. this field and the field across this road there. I mean, like you got some knolls yep. and uh, if you make the call too early, yeah. some of the areas in the field need a little bit more time. That's right. Yeah. So last Friday, I thought, oh, man, we're going to have to replant some headlands here. We got some nice warm temps on the weekend and boom, the beans came and yeah, saved myself a job. So that's <laughs> always good. Let's talk about uh, scouting. Now, obviously, we have what we have right now. Yep. Over the next couple of weeks, what are we going to be looking at? I mean, one of the things that you had on your list, insects. Yeah. So when we're doing stand establishments, we also, what we're checking for then is, is obviously how good the stand is. But if you're not, if you don't have the stand, why, why don't you have the mm. stand? And, and when you get delayed emergence, um, it can be insect damage. So... That's one of the things. Let's talk about weed control here. So this field had a, a pre-plant uh, herbicides applied here. So we want to start scouting our fields about 21 days after planting. And, and what we're scouting for is to see what our sequential treatment's going to be. Um, most often we're targeting ragweed, but we're also targeting volunteer corn, uh, escaped annual grasses. But uh, predominantly, it'll be for broadleaf weeds and, and determining what the sequential treatment will be. Let's go back to that planter. Um, you talked about, you know, there's 
it'll tell you a lot of things. Yep. You know, when you, when you get out yep. a week or two later when you're out uh, waiting for it to emerge. But, you know, what can we learn from the planner? What should we be looking at from a planner performance perspective? Yeah. So when you're doing your stand establishments, you need to determine why you didn't get the stand that you thought you were going to get. So it could be planner performance. You know, did you overplant? Did you underplant? Did you get it into soil moisture when you planted or not? So those are all things to, to figure out. Um, did you use the right plate for the seed size? So those are all things. It's post assessment, but it's stuff that you can try to figure out for next year to correct it. Final thing, and that is, you know, you talk about patience, Dave. You yeah. also talk about gut instincts. Yeah. And I think when you put that together with a, a good agronomy, you, you got a recipe for, for good management. Yeah. yeah. Quite often, I'll ask the grower when we're doing a stand assessment, you know, what was your first gut instinct? And, uh, and quite often, that's the right decision. So you take that into consideration, take the advice from your agronomist, and you come up with a plan whether you should or you shouldn't replant. Yeah. Well, so some great insights on yeah. the Edible Bean School. Dave, always great to have you. Thanks for the invite. All right, no problem. Thanks. Mm -hmm.